So immediately, I can remember, nine years later, this smelled disgusting. And I smeared that all over my head. Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today I'm going to be doing another reaction video. I'm going to be reacting to my oldest hair care formulations. So these date back to late 2011 through mid 2012. If you are new here, my name is Marie Rayma, and I am the person behind the Humble Bee and Me YouTube channel and blog. I'm a cosmetic formulator with diplomas in organic skincare and organic hair care formulation from Formula Botanica, and I also have a Bachelor of Design Honors from York University. I share all kinds of formulations here on YouTube and on my blogs. It's a little bit like a cooking channel, but for skincare and cosmetics. So instead of making like soups and casseroles, we are making lotions and lip balms. If you'd like to learn more or sign up for my free DIY skincare for beginners e-course, make sure you are checking out my website at humblebeeandme.com. On the blog today, in tandem with this video, I am sharing my review of Formula Botanica's Diploma in Organic Hair Care Formulation course. So if you are interested in learning about my experience with that course, make sure you check that out. I will link to it in the description box below. As I release this video, enrollment is actually open Open at Formula Botanica for their individual courses. So if you are considering enrolling with them, now is the time. I have an affiliate link. I'll throw that in the description box below. And it's also in my review, not only for the hair care course, but also for the skincare course of theirs that I completed back in 2018. So if you are considering enrolling with Formula Botanica because of me, because of my reviews and recommendations, I really would appreciate it if you used my affiliate link. Okay, without further ado, let us check out some of my oldest hair care formulations and see how they have aged. I'm thinking probably not all that well. Okay, so here's the very, very first one. This is from October 18th, 2011. I remember I made this before I even launched Humble Bee and Me in the summer of 2011. October 18th, that would have been within the first month, month and a half of, of launching Humble Bee and Me. If we go back in time in my hair care journey, my DIY hair care journey, one of the first lessons I learned is that my hair is not very tolerant of oils. If you put really any meaningful amount of straight oil or butter in my hair, it will just look really lank and greasy and I'll need to wash it sometimes multiple times, depending on how uh, enthusiastic I was with the application of said oil. So if we're looking at hair types, and this is a thing I learned in the Formula Botanica hair care course, my hair is about a 1B. So it tends to be pretty straight and it's pretty not tolerant of oils. I remember some of my earliest DIY hair care experiments were basically me ordering a bottle of an oil that I thought would be great for hair. So things like argan oil and camellia seed oil, you read the product description on the supplier website and it's like, it's been used in hair care for centuries, makes hair amazing. And so I would get a bottle of it and I would like douse myself in it and come with it and be like, am I beautiful yet? No, I need to wash my hair like six times in a row. Yeah. So yeah, I spent a lot of my early hair care formulating, working on ways to make products with lots of oils and butters that didn't make me need like six showers in a row. And so this is where this hair balm came in. When you're looking to apply less of a product to the self, one way that you can reduce application is by making the product harder. So instead of like pouring oil into the hand, which is more or less what I had been doing, you could then have a, a firm bomb and you could just glide your fingers over the surface and pick up a little wee bit and then you could further distribute that and then you could apply it to the hair and this worked way better. So scroll down here. This is completely anhydrous, a blend of shea and cocoa butter, coconut oil, jojoba oil, camellia seed oil, castor oil, walnut oil, and beeswax. Guys, I don't have all these oils now. I think I have most of them, but I know I don't have walnut oil anymore. This is very much a hallmark of some of my earlier formulations is that they're entirely anhydrous and they feature a ton of carrier oils. I would say fairly unnecessarily. Those were the ingredients that I first bought a lot of when I was a new maker. And so yeah, I, I would just have like dozens of different carrier oils and so kind of finding places to use them. If I was to make this again today, it would have far, far, far fewer oils and butters in it. And then we have some vitamin E and a essential oil blend. Now I do remember using this. I remember it smelt quite noticeably of the unrefined shea butter, but that the lavender, lemongrass and rosemary did complement that reasonably well. One of the biggest things that I remember about this is that the batch was huge. You can see this note at the bottom there, which is more recent. The recipe makes 100 grams. You might want to consider having the recipe. I mean, gosh, you might want to consider quartering the recipe or even just making like 10% of it. For hair that's not very tolerant of oils, 100 grams of product is like a lifetime's worth. And so that's definitely a thing that I have learned since then is, yeah, like tone it down.
down to the batch size. I came from doing a lot more cooking and baking where 100 grams really isn't that much, but in the world of like DIY skincare and cosmetics, this is a ton. And then also I only, my scale was only accurate to one gram, so I couldn't really make tiny batches of things. I don't know, this is like fine, but I don't use this anymore. It's kind of like a solid hair oil. I believe I did a Be Better version of this that includes some BTMS to make it more of a conditioning hair balm, and I like that a lot more. As far as first, uh, the first hair care formulation on Humblebee and Me, it's, it's pretty decent, but I can definitely do better now. So here is the second one. So this is from December 20 and it's an apple cinnamon <laughs> apple cider vinegar hair. And yeah, it's just one part apple cider vinegar, three parts water. I don't use this anymore for a few reasons. Kind of reason number one, like this, this needs a preservative and does not have a preservative. So that's not good. Um, I have obviously you know, learned a ton since 2011, but the reason one would need to use an acidic hair rinse is because one is using a very basic thing to wash one's hair with. In the world of crunchy, Pinteresty DIY hair care, that's usually either baking soda, just like straight baking soda or soap effectively. Like it's cold processed soap that is called shampoo. Fundamentally like it has a very high pH and that's just unavoidable when you're making salt. So you'd wash your hair with this really basic thing and then you would have to counteract the uh, basicness of the thing you are washing with, with an acidic rinse. I wash my hair with soap for probably a good five years. And we'll talk about this more a little bit later when we touch on the first shampoo bar I shared. And I really did find that you needed the acidic rinse. The whole system worked reasonably well for me, which it, it doesn't for everybody. I did try ditching the vinegar rinse once when I was traveling and oh, yikes, like my hair tangled so easily. It was so rough and coarse and unmanageable. And it was just, ugh, ugh. You really did need an acidic rinse. Ooh. My first ever DIY hair serum, 2012. I haven't looked at this in a while, so I am not entirely <laughs> sure what's going on here. Okay, I see a picture of a blender, so I'm suspecting that this is an emulsion. And there's a note on there saying, please don't make this because it's really not that good. Yep. <laughs> Okay, so this is a blend of oils, coconut oil, camellia seed oil, castor oil, shea butter, cocoa butter, and some vitamin E, and then aloe juice, phytokeratin, bioplex. Bioplex was this active that I got from New Directions Aromatics that I bought once, like back in 2011. I don't really remember much of anything uh, else about it. Phytokeratin, plant-based keratin, a hydrolyzed protein. Those sh both should be in the cool down phase. No emulsifier. Yeah. That's not great. And as I'm scrolling down, you can see in this picture here, it should be white, but it's not because it's not emulsified. They just kind of have like clumpy, wispy, yellowy bits sitting in a pool of water. That's, eh, ye. Um, and I'm pretty sure I went in and added the note about the preservative a year or two later because I was not using preservatives at this point in my making history. So I can see what I was trying to do, you know, thin the oils out with some water so that I could apply more than just like a drop or two of the product to my hair without it needing to be washed. But this is a very poor execution of that idea. <laughs> Up next from April, 2012, ooh, it was Titanic day, April 14th, 2012. Ooh, that was the hundredth anniversary of the RMS Titanic hitting the iceberg. I really like the Titanic. You can, if you search Titanic on Humble and Me, you'll definitely find, uh, find quite a few things. These are all my Titanic books. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I used to have more, but total side note, but this is the 1985 edition of National Geographic from when they found the Titanic on the ocean floor. And by they, I mean Robert D. Ballard, who signed, who has signed this because I met him when he gave a talk in Calgary years ago. And I gave him a bar of the soap that I made that is sort of inspired by the soap that was on the Titanic. Um, so yeah, I love the Titanic, but back to this. Deluxe All Natural Dry Shampoo. I suspect I probably was overselling this. Dark brown powder and a lot of it from the looks of it. A blend of cornstarch and wheat starch and baking soda, plus zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, plus French red clay, cocoa powder, brown oxide, as needed about two teaspoons, and some essential oils. Okay, so the starch makes sense. Starch is quite a good uh, absorbent ingredient and is very commonly used in commercially available dry shampoos. Baking soda, I'm not sure why I put it in there. It is a really common ingredient in Pinteresty hair care stuff. And given that's where I got a lot of my inspiration from, that is probably the only why I'm going to be able to give you. Zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. So these are both very white 
powders and I'm really not sure what they're doing in here. I know I would have recently purchased them and I would have been looking for things to do with them and I got them to make uh, mineral makeup with, but like why? It's kind of a problem with dry shampoo already is that it makes your hair look white. So why would I put like super white powders in here? Yikes. French red clay. Okay, so clay can be good in dry shampoos because again, it absorbs oil very nicely, but French red clay is, it's like a deep, ruddy, reddy brown color. Messy cocoa powder. Also messy. Why do I have cocoa powder in here when I also have brown iron oxide as needed about two teaspoons? Oh my gosh, like so messy. You could potentially use this as brown paint, like yikes. And then, yeah, I'm mashing everything together through a sieve as I can see in the picture and then from the instructions. That would be because I didn't yet own a coffee grinder that I used for DIY projects. And so this was sort of a workaround. The coffee grinder is way better, worth the 15 or 20 bucks to get one that you just use for making things with. Do not try to use your like coffee coffee grinder. <laughs> I have very distinct memories of using this dry shampoo and then like putting on a nice white sun hat and then the inside of the white sun hat not being white anymore at the end of the day. Nothing deluxe about this dry shampoo. Yeah, no thank you. Mm -mm. Nope, don't make this. When I'm done filming this, I'm gonna go in and add one of those don't make this notes to this. Eesh. Up next is another hair serum. So I'm calling this my ultimate homemade hair serum. This is from April 27th, 2012. I am suspecting once again that the word ultimate is pr probably over egging the pudding a bit. Ah, uh, yes, these pictures are triggering some memories. So the thing that for me was really exciting about this formulation is this, I believe is the first formulation that I share using emulsifying wax. So I had recently purchased some emulsifying wax. I believe it was just emulsifying wax NF and it opened up so many new horizons for me because up until I had some emulsifying wax NF, the only types of emulsions that I had made were beeswax borax ones. And those work, but they're fairly limited. The oil phases and the, and the water phase have to be about the same size. So it's like a 50-50. And then there's quite a bit of beeswax in it. So you end up with quite a rich, greasy, solid, very thick, heavy final product. Basically a traditional cold cream. And when you're using emulsifying wax enough, you can have a significantly smaller oil phase and you don't need a bunch of beeswax in there. So you get a significantly lighter product. And so me thinking about my hair, which doesn't do well with oils, was like, oh my gosh, I can finally, you know, really dilute the oils in a bunch of water and have like quite a lot of water in there and yay. So uh, that's what this is. This is, I call it an ultimate homemade hair serum, but I would call it sort of a uh, hair lotion. It, uh, mediocre to not that great hair lotion, <laughs> to put it charitably. So the water phase, aloe, juice, phytokeratin, glycerin, and bioplex. The phytokeratin and bioplex should be in the cool down phase. Heated oil phase, emulsifying wax, camellia seed oil, jojoba oil, castor oil. Uh, if I was to make something like this today, instead of using emulsifying wax NF, which is non-ionic, I would choose to use something like BTMS 50, which is cationic. So it becomes more of a leave-in hair conditioner than sort of a hair lotion. Cool down phase, vitamin E. It's a lot of vitamin E. Definitely didn't need that much vitamin E in there. And then just sort of essential oils of, definitely should specify some safe amounts there. And broad spectrum preservative of choice. I definitely added that later because again, at this point in my formulating history, I was not using preservatives and I have learned a lot since then. I don't know. I can see what I was trying to do, see what I was going for. I wouldn't do it this way now, but there are some good ingredients in here. You can definitely see how much I learned because this was April 20 27th, 2012. And that first hair serum without an emulsifier at all was March 16th. So it was like within six weeks. So <laughs> cool. Up next, we just got two left. This is the first ever uh, shampoo bar that I shared. And so this was kind of, as we were talking about earlier, it was really soap. It was a cold process soap that I used as slash called shampoo. It has a lot more castor oil in it than my kind of normal soap did. So it had a lot like more luscious lather. So this was, <sighs> kind of a molasses gingerbread-y theme. And so they're a really deep color because they had a, some blackstrap molasses in them. And then I remembered I used a gingerbread -y essential oil blend. So like cinnamon, cloves, vanilla, and ginger. You can see a note here that basically says, you know, given the irritation potential for this essential oil blend, don't uh, basically. So this is a thing that I learned in my Formula Botanica skincare course, where I learned a lot about safe usage of essential oils. There's a lot of really bad information on the 
internet about using essential oils safely. And that is what I had been exposed to. And so taking that Formula Botanica course was really a good wake up call. The rest of it, it's it's a bar of soap. Olive oil, castor oil, coconut oil, tallow, and walnut oil. I used soap to wash my hair for about five years and that ended up working really well for me, but it definitely doesn't work well for everybody. I don't do it anymore. I now make mildly acidic shampoo bars, cleansing conditioners, liquid shampoos, and I do like that a lot more. I don't need an acidic rinse anymore. And from a sort of formulating to share with the world point of view, making mildly acidic products is going to work for a lot more people. And so this is a thing that I definitely learned about in my Formula Botanica hair care course. But I also want to link you to a great blog post from the Sciencey Hair blog. <laughs> I'll link it below. That's all about hair and pH. And in addition to reading the post itself, please read through the comments because there's a bit of really lovely discussion down there between the author of the post and a reader about using soap to wash the hair and how it works for some people and how it doesn't work for a lot of people and why that might be. So it's a really, really interesting read. Highly, highly recommended. And then our last formulation. So this is from July 15th, 2012, and it is a seaweed and clay hair mask. So immediately I can remember nine years later, this smelled disgusting. Oh, it honestly, like it smells like, you know, you're walking down a beach and just getting like that rotten seaweed smell. Maybe if you grew up near the ocean that would have some like nice kind of nostalgic notes for you, but it really doesn't for me. It just smells like pongy and fishy and gross. This stunk. Okay, first picture, my hair all piled up on top of my head. I still have that hair clip, but it has like three teeth left in it instead of uh, the ample supply it appears to in this photo. Uh, yeah, hair piled on top of head, clamped full of green goo. Oh, lovely, this picture, it looks it looks like baby poo. It is a brownie, green, lumpy paste. And I smeared that all over my head. Mm. So I left this in my hair for 40 minutes. I cannot imagine having the patience to have that smell around my head these days. This is a blend of powdered seaweed and rasool clay with a small amount of lemon essential oil and phytokeratin mixed together to make a paste, spread through my hair, and then rinsed out after 40 seaweedy, stinky minutes. Yeah, I remember this being really messy, being really stinky, potentially like tub clogging levels of powder down the drain. Like, ooh, I think I only did this once. Okay. Those are some of my earliest hair care formulations over on Humblebee and me. Holy wow, have I ever learned a lot since uh, late 2011, early 2012. And I have the Formula Botanica Diploma in Organic Hair Care Formulation to thank for a lot of that knowledge, along with awesome resources like the Sciencey Hair Blog, which I will link to in the description box below. Plus just tons of great feedback from you guys, from my awesome bees. You guys have you know shared your experiences with my formulations with me and hearing from people that soap shampoo doesn't work for you. Really a great like <laughs> shove to go like learn why? I really, really appreciate your feedback and helping me to, you know, be a better formulator. And thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Formula Botanica's hair care course, I have linked to my review in the description box below. If you'd like to check out some of my more recent hair care formulations that are, I think, pretty awesome, I'll link to some of those in the description box too. Stay tuned for more awesome formulations of all kinds. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day. Happy making, and I'll see you in the next one.